Shall we get this wild night going? <laughs> Let's begin. Let's do this. All right. Our first speaker is familiar with being first. He is the first blind climber to reach the west summit of Mount Logan. He climbed Alaska's Denali and traversed Baffin Island. Let's just let that sink in for a second, okay? Let's just let that sink in. <laughs> Due to attrition in the sport of blind climbing, he is one of a few blind climbers left in the world. Ladies, gentlemen, theys and thems, please welcome to the stage Dr. Ross Watson. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to get this started, apparently I am looking for a red button. <laughs> <laughs> On the screen, you see a picture of Denali. And what makes this a little wild is that I climbed this mountain with an international team of nine climbers, four of whom have disabilities. There is myself, a blind climber from Britain, a climber from Alaska with an amputation, and a Nepalese Sherpa. LACPA put these prayer flags at each one of our camps. And it was such a brilliant thing because at night when you had the weight of the day and yet the weight of the next day on your mind, listening to these flags was so calming. I was approaching a ledge or an edge that was 18 inches wide in this shot. It was 2,000 feet to the left 18 to the right, so I kept trying to lean right. <laughs> and I yelled out, am I on the ridge? And they said, if you weren't, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> this is Mount Logan. As we flew up to the mountain, I heard that the pilot had landed at 18,000 once. And I thought, put me there, that'll make it close. And he said, well, I read a few books about flying since I did that. <laughs> I um, rope in the middle. I can hear the climber ahead of me, and the climber behind me can see me and give me directions. And quite frankly, I feel more comfortable and safer there than I do crossing a Calgary street with a white <laughs> cane. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock at night. We're at 11,000, the land of the midnight sun. And when the sun goes down, it drops to 45 below. We'll be on the mountain for 23 days. One of the areas we go through is called the King's Trench. And there's these huge seracs at the top. So we nicknamed it the shooting gallery because we were never quite sure when one of them would be dropping on us. <laughs> we had to traverse that twice to get all our gear up. I'm at King Call in this shot. I'm putting on some crampons. Now, I have to do everything with my gloves off and my hands freeze. And to make sure my gear is attached and safe, I sometimes put my mouth on it, which is kind of the equivalent of the schoolyard boot scraper. <laughs> Here, I'm going up a slope, and the climber ahead of me is kicking steps in. Now that takes a lot of energy, but also it makes a safe place for me to put my foot. So I'm staying closer to him than I usually do so that I can put my foot in his footsteps. Up above us, there's a bunch of seracs and crevasses. We don't know which way to go. We're the first team on the mountain this year. So we sent our team ahead to scout for a way through the crevasses and the seracs. In the next shot, you'll see the Captain Jay probing a nice bridge that he found through those crevasses. And this ice bridge was going to allow us to pass and go further up the mountain. He's probing it. It will hold the team. Now, on Denali, I fell into three crevasses and the camp latrine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on Logan, I had no fear of jumping crevasses but I had a mortal fear of the latrine. <laughs> and when you face your worst fear first thing in the morning, the day goes pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> We're above the rest of the mountains in the St. Elias Range, which gives us great views and stuff, but the mountains no longer shelter us. 
from the North Atlantic weather that blows across the St. Elias Range. So from this point, it is noticeably colder. We'll still have crevasses ahead of us, and we have a major one here that we're traversing along because, you know, if, if we can't get across this one, we have to turn back and it's over. So we're quite anxious to find a snow bridge across this crevasse. We find the snow bridge and I'm about to cross it here. Now, I maintain there's three types of fear. There's mental fear, that's in your head. There's, you know, tuition about fear, that's in your gut. But ladies and gentlemen, True fear is in your sphincter. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're at Prospector's Call here. This is our last camp before summit. It's cold. This is a cold day and the cold night, or well, actually the night was the coldest we spent on the mountain and we're hoping for good weather the next day. The weather was poor. We did reach the west summit but we had to duck behind the ridge to get a banner shot for our sponsor. There's three summits on Logan because the summit plateau is 19 kilometers long. We, we, we reached the west summit. The next day on our descent, we came into a full-blown whiteout. Now, we now had three blind climbers on the team. <laughs> But we had marked our way up the mountain around crevasses with the GPS. And we actually used those GPSs to find our way around. And we're on the descent. Not six climbers started this mountain. Three dropped out at 16 because of altitude sickness. Three of us made the west summit. We all made it home. The next shot here is my team. And I'll give you a tip. The one thing about being wild is surround yourself with wild people. These guys here are all mountain experts, wildlife ecologists, and just about half crazy. <laughs> but I got to the wildest places in Canada with them. Thank you very much.